Well, good morning. Um, as Pastor said, I have been blessed to know, uh, get to know Pastor. We live on the same road. We pass each other all the time. Um, him and his wonderful wife and his family. And this church is very special to me because my wife and I, 17 years ago coming on, we had our first date in this church. So I advise anyone who's looking to get married, uh, tell them to come visit church here to go for their first date because it worked for me. So I, I think it worked. Uh, you know my wife, Victoria Wilson. Um, so how blessed we are. We have our family from Kentucky, our family from Indiana that are here, and some from Ohio that are here. So thank you all for coming. And many of you know Robert Holt House uh, with Holt House Farms and his dad. And, and uh, some of his family also attends here. He does all of our production and camera work, and he just is an absolutely fabulous, godly man, and I'm blessed to know him. And so thank you. So um, we're going to do a recording here, but we're just going to preach it like normal, and he'll do his thing. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer for now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege and opportunity that we have to come before you. God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy and love. Father, we just ask you, God, that you would just open up our hearts and minds and help us to receive your word. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of my message is Deeper. I want to talk to you about what it means to go uh, deeper in God, to draw closer to God. See, oftentimes Christians are told that when you get saved, you go to church, and you should. Church is so self together as we see the day approaching. When you get saved, you should also read your Bible. Reading the Word of God helps you to learn His Word, learn who He is and how God operates. We're also told that we should pray. It's so important that we pray, that we go to church, that we read our Bible. But there's something else that I want to talk to you about. Whether you're a new Christian or whether you've been a Christian for a long, long time, that will help you to grow closer to God. Now, why do you want to grow closer to God? Well, any time that you draw closer to God, good things happen. I often say that when people are desiring a healing touch of God, you don't need to, to go after Jesus Christ. That when you need a miracle or a blessing of God, you need to go after Jesus Christ. If you need anything physically, spiritually, if you go after God, God will take care of everything. And that's what I want to show you this morning. If you have a pen, you might want to get it out because I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures quickly. And if you can just write it down and then you can go back. So it's a little bit teachy preachy this morning, but I hope it blesses you. The Bible says in Romans 1, 17, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So it says that the righteousness of God, who God is to faith, meaning that you go from faith to faith as God gives you revelations. Now, I can show you this. The best way to show you this is that if you have been a Christian for a long time, you can look back in your life and you can see the hand of God. You can see that you are not the same person that you used to be. You can see how you've grown in God, how God has uh, weeded some of those things out of you. Some of the worries or anxieties or fears or stresses that you used to have, you no longer have because God has given you his peace, his joy, and he's revealed to you how to overcome many situations. So from faith to faith, we grow. Then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.10, But God hath revealed to them by us by his Spirit. So they're revealed by the Spirit of God. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So notice it says that there are deep things of God and there are surface level things of God. That's why Paul said it's important that we go from the milk to the meat. Now, this is not dependent on how long that you have been saved. I've met a lot of Christians who've been saved for 50 years and who aren't very Christ-like. I've met people who've been saved just for a year or two. And the way that they have grown in God has been outstanding and powerful. So notice that the deep things of God is not dependent on how many years you have served God. 
The deep things of God is not dependent on that after so many years, I've been, I've been blessed to be a minister for over 20 plus years, preach over a thousand messages all over the United States. That does not mean that I have made it after I made my thousandth sermon or my 20 year ministering. No, no, no. That you can get the deep things of God even if you're new to the faith. And that's what I want to show you is how to do that. As I said, I've been blessed to do all of that, but something changed. In March of 2020, when the pandemic began, when the world started to shut down, when all of a sudden you couldn't go to the restaurants where churches all over the United States, including ours, shut down for a while and things slowed down. And I had something and I discovered something in March of 2020 that I've never had before in my entire life, or at least I thought I never had, and that was time. I had all this time. And all of a sudden, by that Spirit of God was doing something in me. Now, you know when the Spirit of God is speaking to you. You can tell the Bible says, by my sheep know his voice. We know his voice. We know when God is urging us to do something. We know when God is drawing us. Recently, I just preached at a Baptist church in another city. And after I got done preaching, I was really thirsty. And I thought, I'm going to go stop by the gas station and get some water. So I went there, grabbed a bottle of water. And before, I, I, as soon as, I mean, I was getting ready to pay. And I felt the Spirit of God say, tell that lady that God loves her. I thought, I'm not going to tell her that, God. There's all these people in here. I'm thirsty. She already knows God loves her. And so I walked out the door. I went to my car. And all of a sudden, God said, you should have told her that I love her. You ever had God do that to you? You just know because you know because you know. So what I do? I got in my car and I took off. And God said something to me. He said, it's okay if you don't tell her. I'll send someone else. And I thought, oh, God, you got me. So I stopped, I turned the car right around, went back, and I said, I have to tell you something. I said, I'm a minister, and I just got done preaching, and I just want you to know that God loves you. You should have seen the tears and everything and the power of God that came upon her. So we know God's voice. God speaks to us. God is a relationship. God puts things on our hearts because he knows everything. He knows what's best for all of our lives. And he speaks to us in such a way that we know him. And in March of 2020, when the pandemic began, or when it got really bad, so to speak, I knew what God was telling me to do. God was telling me to take the time that I had and spend it with him, which is a little bit uh, weird for me to think because I've always spent time with God. I've always prayed and read my Bible and gone to church, but this was different. I could tell that God was doing something different. This time I felt, and I, oh, just so strong, that my prayer had to be this. God, show me your ways. Teach me who you are. And again, this didn't make sense to me because after 20 years, I don't know everything about God. But I've learned a lot about God. You know, I've been, I went to Bible education. I have degrees in Bible. I've been ministering for 20 years. I know God. But my prayer over and over was, God, show me your ways. I would go into my bedroom. I would close the door. I would lay on my bed. Everything was quiet. And I would pray that prayer every single day. I started to pray that prayer. And as I was studying scriptures, the Lord showed me some of this. In Exodus 33, 13, it says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy ways, that I may know thee. So Moses, here he had led the children of Israel. God used him to set them free. And here Moses, this great man of God, if anybody knew God, Moses knew God. And Moses said, show me your ways. Teach me who you are, God. And then David said in Psalm 25, 4, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Then he says again in Psalm 86, 11, teach me thy ways, O Lord. He says, these great men of God are praying, Lord, teach me you. And I thought, well, I'm no Moses and I'm no David. And if it's good enough for Moses to pray and David to pray, it's definitely good enough for Ricky Branham to pray. So every single day, that's what I prayed. Lord, show me your ways. And as I would go into my bedroom, and as I would close everything out, I came across this scripture. 
And Matthew 6, 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That scripture came alive to me. You ever read something in the Bible multiple times, never really spoke to you, but then you read something in the Bible and you're like, whoa, where has that been hiding? And you've read it a thousand times, right? But here it says, when you go into your secret place to pray. So I would go into that secret place, my bedroom, and I would shut the door and I was there alone. This is the first step that I'm going to show you how to do this. And here's what it says in Matthew 14, 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Jesus Christ would go away from the multitude and get alone with God. My first question to you is, when is the last time you've really been alone with God? You say, well, I have been alone with God. I'm alone with God uh, during this time or that time. But this is different. I'm going to show you how this alone time is different. If you just bear with me, I want you to take notes on this. So the first thing that you have to do is be alone with God. And then it says to be still. Now, stillness is quieting your soul. Your soul is what you think. It's what you feel. It's what you want. It's that part of you that, that, that it's, it's who you are. You have desires and you things that you want and, and things that you think. That's part of who you are. That's part of you that will go to heaven if you're a Christian. So, do you, and you know your soul by this. That any time that you've ever gone to pray and you ever notice that your mind just wanders all over. You remember all the things you got to do or if the minister's up here preaching, all you can think about is, man, that barbecue or that dinner or what you got to do or you got to get home and mow the grass. All these thoughts that come to you as you are praying. Here it says, quiet your soul. How do you do that? Psalm 4, 4, it says, stand in all, sin not, commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Psalm 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Now, stillness means that you quiet your soul. We are commanded by God to be still. Yeah, there's a time not to be still. When we come together as a congregation and we worship God together in unity and power. Yes, there's a time for that. But there's a time that you are still. And the way that you become still with God is you might read a little bit. You might worship God. I found myself in my bedroom doing this. After I was alone with God, I found myself that I would read a scripture or two. And then I would worship God. I would sing my favorite song, Hallelujah. And if you've ever heard me sing, I am an awful singer. But it was so powerful. I would just lay there one time. I had well, went to a church and they had said, uh, does anyone have a special song? And, and I knew God told me, go up there and sing, I'll fly away. Does anyone know that song? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God told me that. And so I raised my hand and I said, I have a special song. And they said, well, come on up here. And so I went up there to, to get ready to sing. And the lady goes, I played the piano for so long. You just start playing, you start singing, honey, and I'll find your key. I thought, good enough with me. So I started singing. She looked at me like that was the worst she had ever seen. She, she didn't find a key. There was no key that I was in, okay? And there I was. It was awful. Oh, man, I was so mad at God after I got done up there because I was thinking that the angelic heaven was going to open and the angels of God would help me. No, 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 no. God let me fall flat on my face. But as I walked back to my, my thing, I felt the spirit of God so strong because I had obeyed him. And I said, God, don't ever do that again, please. And thank God he never has. But I was obedient. I passed the test, right? But I knew God's voice. And there's a time that you have to be still with God. And I would be still and I would sing that song, hallelujah. And I would just worship God. And then I would be quiet. God told me. Shh, stop talking. The Bible says in Zechariah 2.13, Be silent, O all flesh. 
before the Lord. Why are we have to why do we have to be quiet? Quietness prepares you and allows you to hear the voice of God. You cannot hear the voice of God when the television on, when the radio on, when everything is so loud. Why? In 1 Kings 19, 12, it says that God spoke in a still, small voice. God was not in the earthquake. He was not in the lightning. And the only way that sometimes you can hear what God is trying to tell you is to be quiet in him. And I would be quiet. So I would go and be alone with God. I would read a little bit, then I would worship God, and then I would be quiet. And then after I was quiet, I would wait. Waiting is so important. God is not rushed. Psalm 37, 7 says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Psalm 135 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. There's that soul again. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. So watch this. I'm going to show you this. So I was alone with God. I was still. I was quiet. And I waited. But here's the key. I took all of those things. And I started to do them every single day. Sometimes multiple times a day. What do we call that? We call that seeking. I started to seek God's face. Not his hand. I wasn't saying, gimme, gimme, gimme. I rub you the right way and you're going to grant me three wishes. No, 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 no. God, show me who you are. I want to know about you. I know about you, but I want to know you. Way different. I know all of you, or most of you. I know about you, but I want to know you. And that's what I said to God. And as I started to do that day in and day out, I noticed that I went from the asking phase of God to the seeking phase. You know, we, earlier we quoted Matthew 7, 7, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. The seeking is the next step in that. It, it's, it's you're seeking to know God. It's okay with asking. You should ask. Christians should ask. The Bible, we're commanded to ask. It says, you have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. We know that. But there comes a time when you need to seek after God's face. And I started to do that. And in one of my seekings, one of my days, the Lord showed me a scripture, Hebrews eleven six. 6. Many, many of you know that. You probably can quote it. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Beautiful scripture. We never quote the second part of that verse. And when that second verse, when I read it, I was like, it came alive in me. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But I was perplexed. I said, God, you know my heart. I'm seeking you because I want to know you. Not because of what I can get from you. But God said, my word says that I must reward you because you are seeking me. When God told me that, that was interesting. I thought, that's great. Didn't think much about it, though, to be honest with you. Yeah, God will bless me. Thank you, God. Not really what I'm after. Okay, sure. So life went on, and I continued to do those things. I continued to be alone with God, be still with God. I continued to be quiet with God. I continued to wait on God, and I did it on a regular basis. And then on one of those times, one of those occasions, God told me that I want you to do social media ministry. And I thought, oh, no, Lord, I don't want to do social media ministry. I purposely have stayed away from social media ministry. But I knew God's voice. I knew it. And I said, all right. So what did I do as soon as I got done hearing from God? I went and ordered a $1,000 iPad. And that $1,000 iPad come, and my wife, Victoria, says, what in the world did you order an iPad for like this? I said, God told me I have to do social media ministry. She said, are you sure that's God? She goes, or do you just want a new iPad? I said, no, it's God. I got to do it. She goes, well, if the Lord told you to do it, then do it. She knows how it works, being a, a minister's wife. If God tells you to do it, you better be obedient. We've learned that a long time ago. So I obeyed, started it. Everything went good. Didn't think much about it. Church was happy because they got to hear messages while they couldn't attend church during the pandemic. Yada, yada. Life was good. Okay, great. But what I didn't know 
was that later that year, a television minister, who I didn't really know, would come up to me and say, hey, I've been watching your program every week. And he said, it's very biblical. He goes, you should go into television ministry. I thought, what in the world? And when he said that again, though, I know the voice of God. There it was. I said, God, this is my next step. But I told God, I said, God, I live in Willard, Ohio. Lest you forget. We're a town of 6,000 people. We don't have sprawling television stations all over, nor do we have this, that, and that. I said, God, if it's you, you ever done this to God? God, if it's you, and you show me, right? You ever said that to God? So I said, sure, you confirm it, God. That's what we call it. We call it the Christian term. We get, you confirm it, God. So I said, you confirm it, God. And the next thing I know, I meet some guy out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, who's a Christian television agent, and says, hey, we want you on our, our network, want you, national network. He said, we're going to send you out to 36 million people every United, all throughout the United States every single week. And it's going to air all over. And then he said, he kept going on and telling me about all this. And he says, it's Oral Roberts Network. And he said, they're really interested. And I went through all this. And I, he, I said, what do I got to do? He says, well, they got to review you completely. He says, they're going to go through every single thing that you do and look for, through everything to see if you're accepted. And I thought, well, Lord, if this is what you want, then so be it. And then he called me the next week and said, you're accepted. We're ready to go. I said, now what? He goes, well, now you need a production company, and now you need a closed captioning company. I said, I live in Willard, Ohio. I don't even know what that is. And how God worked it out. And then they set me up with a, a company out of California who does all of our closed captioning. God sent me Robert, my cousin, who's just gifted and talented beyond measure and god just worked it all out and i said this to god and god after all this started happening god said didn't i tell you that i would reward you because you sought me i've seen more people come to jesus christ in eight months than i've seen in 20 plus years of evangelism I seen the power of God move in mighty way, and I can't take an ounce of credit for it. I said, God, why are you rewarding me this way? He said, I'm going to give you a desires of your heart and reward you. He says, but you must take your reward. This is important, and we'll come back to this. You must take your reward and use it and glorify me. Anything and everything that I bless you with, it's to glorify me. It's not so that you can build bigger barns and so that you can take your soul at ease. If you remember the parable of the man who did that, right? No, this is so that you can take whatever God blesses you with and so that you can use it for him. God might bless you with more peace, more joy. He might bless you with just something that someone needs, whatever it might be. God will take you and reward you and bless you. And then it is your job to use it to glorify god but that's not where god stopped see i was understanding and you know how we read all those scriptures in john 10 10 how the thief cometh to kill steal and destroy but i've come that you might have life and life more abundantly and then we read in psalm 23 3 where david said my cup overfloweth runneth over you know all those scriptures and so god didn't just open up and reward me then i started to notice things that blew my mind i would read the bible and i would have these messages and these revelations of things that just astound me this is one of those messages about going deeper in god and i would have these things that would come together and i have all these things that just i just I have a hard time understanding and i have all these book ideas and and a, and a, and a minister out of houston is talking with me about our first book and all this stuff and all these things just started to come like never before. And I've been ministering 20 years. But it was a different revelation. It was a, a different anointing. It's nothing that I did. But I knew that it was all because I was seeking to know God. And I was finding God. And God's word says that he must reward those that seek him. Which is why I said earlier, if you need a healing touch, seek Jesus. If you need a financial miracle, seek Jesus. If you need a mar marital miracle, seek Jesus. Whatever it is, whatever problem you have, the answer is seeking the face of God. That's the answer. That's where you receive the blessing of God. And then, as that started to happen, God started to speak to me. 
in new ways through dreams and visions. And when you start talking about that, everyone's like, ooh, dreams and visions. No, things that were like, I can't even be, begin to explain to you. I'll tell you a few of them, though. I was in a, had a dream that my friend, I saw the Spirit of God, and I met with the Spirit of God in this field, and he told me my friend's name, and he says that this person is seeking, is seeking me, but they don't know what to do, Ricky. You need to call them. And I had that meeting in the field with God, and I called my friend up the next day, and I thought, oh, gosh, this ain't going to go good, because I really don't know him. I know him, but I don't know him. He's my friend, but not like that, you know? But I called him up, and I said, hey, uh, I had a meeting with God in the field, and your name came up. And, and so I told him my dream started bawling. He goes, Ricky, I was just asking God what it is I need to do and how to do it. And I thought, okay, that one was from God. You know how you can tell? It's like, all right, that one wasn't crazy. That was God. And then I started to have dreams, and I started to see words that didn't make sense in my dreams. And I would look them up all throughout Google. They're not in there. And the Lord told me there are heavenly words and he'll show me the meaning in his time. I had a dream. One time I was dealing with a situation and I saw Matthew 16, 23 in a dream. I had another dream. I walked into a cafe and I had been praying about God to help my messages to grow and to better glorify him. And I walked in this cafe and this great Christian apologist was right in front of me. Not someone who apologizes, you know, an apologist, someone who explains the scriptures. And I walked in and this great Christian apologist was right there and he smiled at me and he said, Ricky, the key is to expound on the scriptures. And I looked it up and Jesus talked about expounding on the scriptures. Oh, it just... And then I started to have dreams that I was preaching in stadiums and I would hear my message. I would hear the title of it. I ain't going to share it with you yet because I'm saving that. I had a dream that I was with a well-known preacher. And one time in this one, we were going to a store and a baby, a mom was pushing a baby stroller. Ooh, this one gets me. And she said, preacher, my baby needs healed. Ooh. And I felt the power of God say, Tell that baby she's healed in the name of Jesus. Woo. Started to have all these things, and that's all I'm going to share with you. But I have these all the time, and I write them all down. And part of the way that God has rewarded me is he started to speak to me in ways and things that I could never imagine. And I could go on and on and on. This isn't a message, though, about trying to get you something. This is a message about that if you want to go deeper in God, you need to seek him. Yes, you need to come to church. Yes, you need to pray. Yes, you need to support your pastor. Yes, you need to read your Bible. Yes, yes, yes. But you need to spend time with God alone. He sees in secret. He dwells in the secret place. You have to be alone with God. Then you have to be still with God by reading or worshiping God. Then you have to be quiet. Then you have to wait upon God. Then you need to repeat and repeat and repeat. And God showed me that many people, that he has many, many blessings for all of us. But the problem is that oftentimes we will not take the time to seek God the way that we need to. These are for everyone. God has plans and purposes to use you in many, many capacities. It can be wherever you work. It can be with your family, friends, whatever it might be, or it can be on a greater scale. But you have to take time with God. I would like to say that I did this and discovered this on my own, but I didn't. It was that drawing of the Spirit of God that drew me in. But I knew enough to know the voice of God. And whenever God lays something on your heart, whenever you seek after God, it says he will reward you. And when he rewards you, you take the blessings that God has given you and you give it back to him. God's already shown me so many revelations 
with money. He says, why would I give you money that you can win souls for me? God says, why would I give you this so that you can win souls for me? Anything and everything that God gives you, it's all about those last time, the last days, about winning as much people for Christ as we can. Because listen, the Lord's coming back. I don't know the day or the hour, but I can tell you by the signs and seasons, the Bible says we'll know, and he is coming back. And he's coming for those that are looking for him, for those that are ready for him. And it is our job, I believe, is this great last revival all throughout the United States that those who want to know God, God's going to show himself to them like never before. And those who don't want to know God, God's going to allow them to drift. He's going to allow them to go. Those that have been lukewarm and barely in, God's going to let them go. But those that are desiring him, he's going to show himself to you like never before. And you don't want to miss that. That's what our job is. That's what my message to you is, that there is a deeper level in God. And that deeper level cause, will call you, call, cause you to have to sacrifice a little bit of your time. Oftentimes when I would seek God, it was usually a half hour or an hour. I'd be alone with God during that time. I know sometimes it's hard to sneak away when you for an hour or a half hour, especially when I have a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, multiple jobs, wife, family. I understand it. I get it. But if you do this, that's why he will reward you because you are desiring him first above all things. And isn't that what Matthew 6.33 says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So would you mind bowing your head for a moment as they come to play something on the stage? My hope and my prayer for you is that you want to draw closer to God, that you desire to know him more than ever. Again, this isn't something that you have to do and have to wait till you're 10, 20 years in it. You can start right now. I don't care if you've been saved less than a year. If you will seek and spend time with God, it says he will reward you. Seek to know God. I can share many other revelations and many other things that God has given me. But right now, my concern is this. I want you to make a decision that you want to know God more than you ever have. That you want a closer walk with him. And the first thing that you always have to do when you desire a closer walk is to make sure that there's nothing between you and God. It's making sure that our hearts are clear, our minds are clear, that all sin is gone. And how do we do that? We do that by confessing Christ. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I ask you here this morning, if you would like to make that commitment for a closer walk with Christ, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer of salvation. If you might have already prayed this prayer, that's fine. But if you would like to pray it again and rededicate your lives, it's powerful. If you need to know Christ in a deeper way, if you just need to make that final decision that you're going to follow him, I ask you to pray this prayer. Would everyone pray this prayer out loud with me? And then I'm going to pray for you that God would help you to seek him like never before. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. And I confess and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I invite Jesus into my heart and into my life. And I ask you, God, to forgive me of all my sin. I forgive everyone. And I ask you to save me, help me, change me, and give me a home in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want to pray for you. If you would and you want a deeper walk with God, would you just stand right where you're at? If you desire to know him deeper, Right where you're at, would you stand? And we're all going to pray together. If you want to draw closer to God, 
If you want to stand, you're more than welcome to. We're just going to stand by our standing. We're going to say to God, God, I want to know you. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we know, Father God, that it is your desire that we know you in a deeper way. God, I ask you to make our path straight. I bind and rebuke every devil and every demon in the name of Jesus Christ that would try to hinder us, try to distract us. And I ask you, God, to help us to spend alone time with you. Help us to spend alone time reading and praying. God, help us to then be quiet before you. God, help us to wait patiently upon you. And God, help us to do this on a regular basis. And God, when you reward us, God, help us to take your rewards and glorify you and honor you. Because that's what it's all about. And we ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. And the congregation says, amen. May God bless all of you. After service, we have free wooden crosses from Israel and pens if you'd like anything. May God bless you.